If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question before listening on. We can begin by drawing a picture that captures what's being described. So here we have the car at the top of the hill. The question mentions that the car leaves the hill from rest, so its initial speed would be 0 meters per second. The acceleration is given in the question as 4 meters per second squared. And what we're going to do is calculate the final speed that it leaves the edge of the cliff with. And we can also note that the distance that the car travels down the ramp is 50 meters. Now we can calculate the final speed of the car using the following formula from kinematics. We recall that the initial speed of the car was zero, so that actually eliminates this term from the formula. And then to calculate the final speed, we can take the square root of both sides of the equation. We will then go ahead and plug in the known values for the acceleration and the displacement. And when we calculate that, we get exactly 20.0 meters per second as the final speed that the car has when it leaves the edge of the cliff. Let's take a closer look at the car leaving the edge of the cliff. Remember at this point, its speed is 20 meters per second. So here we have the car, it's getting ready to fly off the edge of the cliff. It now has an initial speed of 20 meters per second, so notice that the final speed we just calculated becomes the initial speed for this portion of the problem. The car is going to fly off the edge of the cliff and follow a parabola-shaped path and it's going to crash into the ocean below. The question states that the cliff is 30 meters tall, so we've noted that. What we need to do is take this initial speed of 20 meters per second and break it into its x and y components. Now here we have the x component projecting to the right and we can see that it's adjacent to the 24 degree angle. So that means that the x component of the initial velocity will be that initial velocity multiplied by the cosine of 24. We're using the cosine again because that x component is adjacent to the 24 degree angle. The y component is opposite to the 24 degree angle so the y component will become 20 times the sine of the 24 degree angle. Notice that because the y component of the initial velocity points downward, we're going to put a negative sign on it. Now that we have that accomplished, we can take a look at a projectile motion table. Now along the left side of the table, we have the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement, and then the x and y components of those values. We'll go ahead and plug in the x and y component of the initial velocity, which we just determined. For the acceleration in the x direction, the value is zero, as is most often the case in projectile motion questions. For the y component, we have an acceleration, of course, of negative 9.8 because of gravity. Also in the y direction, we have the displacement of 30 meters. Now notice that the object is traveling downward, so that displacement in the y direction must be labeled as negative 30 meters. Now we actually have sufficient information to calculate the final velocity in the y direction, so we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll show the work over here with the following equation from kinematics. Again, we're plugging in the known values for the y direction so we can solve for the final velocity in the y direction. In fact, we might want to take the square root of both sides of this equation first so that we can isolate v. And then we'll plug in the known values. Now when you compute this on your calculator, you're probably going to end up with a positive value of 25.6, but we have to keep in mind that because the car is moving downward, we have to put a negative sign on that final velocity, so just be very careful there. Final velocity therefore turns out to be negative 25.6 meters per second. We can fill that into the y table. Notice that we have a lot of information building here in the y table. We're going to be able to calculate the time of flight, and we can use the following equation from kinematics. We'll solve this equation for time by first subtracting v naught from both sides, and then dividing both sides of the equation by a. We'll plug in the known values again from the y direction. And when we plug all that into our calculator, we should get approximately 1.78 seconds for the time of flight. So we've actually answered part B of the question, which asks for the length of time the car is in the air. We can fill in the 1.78 seconds for both the x direction and the y direction. For part A of the question, we are being asked to find the position relative to the base of the cliff. So if we go back to the picture, we're essentially being asked to calculate this displacement here. That's along the x direction, so we're going to use information from the x portion of our table. We'll consider the following formula. Now as noted earlier, in the x direction the acceleration is zero, so that's going to knock away this entire term. And then we can plug in the known values for the initial velocity and the time, again from the x direction. And when we simplify that we get approximately 32.5 meters. 
for the displacement from the base of the cliff. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I will do my best to post a solution on YouTube.